How you doing, fam bam? This is Chris Mizo here, and you probably just finished building your PC and you're really frustrated. I can understand exactly how you're feeling. Many of you out there who first built a PC or it's been a really long time that you've built a PC, you probably ran into the issue and hence why you're watching this video now. I'm gonna get straight to the point here because I'm gonna tell you my problem first. And if this doesn't resolve your problem at first, then you can continue on this content if you choose to. And if you're looking for any specific moments, I will have everything timestamped right down below. And I'm specifically talking to most people out there or everybody out there who has an ASUS motherboard, specifically a X670E. Now this may also affect other motherboards such as Intel Z690s or Z790s or B650s, whichever motherboards that you currently have, you could also run into the very same issue. But the issue that I currently ran into my PC and I wanted to share with you fam bam was that the memory was not recognized through the BIOS. So I had to update my BIOS in order for my memory to be registered. Otherwise it would be incompatible and it wouldn't work. In fact, I had a code C05. And if you have that same C05 code, then that should resolve your issue. And if it doesn't, just hang in there because I'm gonna go over a couple things with you. Or maybe you're seeing a different error code that you're experiencing. Now with Intel's, you may see codes such as 55, or you can run into 53, 15, 95, or even 99. And I believe there is another code that I am that slipped in my mind, but either way, I will have this list posted right down in the description down below. And it will be also in this video. You see it pop up, you can pause it if you wouldn't want to just look over it to see which type of trouble code or Q code that you're receiving from your Q code ASUS motherboard. Either way, most of the time it will be memory problems. So I'm gonna go over a few basics first, which easily slips my mind all the time because I swear I have dyslexia when it comes to building PCs every time. And that's the memory slots could be installed incorrectly. Now, if the memory slots are installed incorrectly, even though you think you already have it set up for dual RAM, you could have it in A1 and B1 when it should actually be in A2 and B2. That will also resolve your problem if you realize that your PC is not starting and it just doesn't want to boot up. And you might see any one of the error codes as I mentioned. Another very common issue that you can run into is that the memory slots when you install your RAM, you wanna make sure that you don't have any type of oils, maybe a little thermal grease, anything that prevents contact from the motherboard contacting your pins on your, on your RAM. Because if that happens, then it won't be able to communicate and it will improperly start. Therefore, getting you that annoying ass Q code. And nobody wants to run into that. So make sure, first check, your RAM, make sure it's nice and clean. And if it isn't like a microfiber, like something you use for sunglasses or glasses and put a dab of alcohol on there to wipe it and make sure it is nice and dry. Once it is, you can insert it into A2 and B2. Another easy problem to miss is that sometimes it isn't seated correctly. It all depends on the ASUS motherboard that you get. Typically like ASUS Prime motherboards, you may have to open both tabs in order to install the DDR4 or DDR5 memory. And when you do, you wanna make sure that when you push in both sides, you wanna make sure it is seated flush and you hear clicking on both sides. Now, some of you might have a more premium board. For those who have a ROG Extreme, Hero, Formula, some of those motherboards do not have an extra tab on specifically on the bottom. And if it doesn't, it, that's really not a big deal. You just got to make sure that it is flush. That's the most important part. So when you install the RAM, just make sure it is insert, inserted correctly and seated correctly. So you want to push it evenly down and you'll hear one side click and make sure you look over it. You'll be able to tell if it's not, if it's not seated correctly because you'll see it sitting in a lopsided view. And if it is, that could cause a connection issue. Now, say you went through all the steps already. Say you wiped down your memory, you already seated it correctly, you put it in 
A2 and B2, you updated your BIOS, you're still running into the same issue. By now, you're probably freaking out because your PC's still not booting. And don't worry. The other issue that it could be is that check your RAM modules. Check it. Actually check your RAM. So don't just install both of them. Just install one of them and see if the issue persists. Now, if it doesn't persist, proceed to the next step, which is to install the other stick of RAM. And after you install the other stick of RAM, then you get some sort of issue to where your BIOS isn't starting. Then you have an issue with the manufacturing company. So if it's Corsair, if it is G-Skill, if it is Kingston, whichever memory company that you have, make sure you return it over and exchange it for a new memory because that could be the issue. And don't worry, it can happen. Not everyone can win the silicon lottery and get the best RAM that is out there. So make sure you check those steps. Now, if you're questioning, you did all these steps and you're still getting some sort of issue, then make sure you check out your Q code. Sometimes it doesn't always read correctly because mine specifically was a C05 and that's specifically for the X670E motherboards that people have out there or whoever has it and seen this code before just remember to make sure to update your bios now if you are still running into issues and it isn't memory related just make sure it's not double zero or d zero because if it is d zero or zero zero it could be something with your cpu and don't panic sometimes it just could be that maybe there is a connection issue you forgot to plug in your CPU through your ATX. And now with the newer CPUs, you wanna make sure that everything is plugged in properly. Make sure your ATX, your 24 pin is properly installed. Make sure your CPU pins are properly installed. Not just one, but install both of them. There is another uh, extra component when it comes to plugging in under the 24 pin ATX connection. You'll see another six pin connection where you can plug in a ATX connection. Or PCI Express connection. And that is optional. You don't have to worry about that connection. So don't panic if you don't have anything plugged into those ports. That's specifically for most of them or specifically for USB-C. It's for the super fast charging or power delivery for USB. With the GPU, it shouldn't affect it. You should get some other Q codes that if it is GPU related, but you can always check the connections because sometimes you can, again, Q codes are not always 100% accurate. They just try to pinpoint to the best of their ability. Not like the old days where you heard the old loud beeping sound where you knew it was the RAM or if you knew it was something else because of that. Hopefully this does resolve your issue. I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. You know, anybody else who is suffering with motherboard issues who just built their PC, don't torture them. Make sure you share this video with them. And also, if not part of the big, wonderful fan bam, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Fan bam, guys, have you run into any Q code issues that you would like to share or had any experience with any that you can share with the fan bam? because I'm sure there's others out there just like you who ran into issues and would like to know. There's nothing but love when it comes to the fan, man. Thanks so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.